if you've spent any amount of time looking up guides for rise of kingdoms you're quickly going to realize that most players recommend investing in commanders that deal lots of skill damage and in particular commanders that deal large amounts of skill damage to multiple enemies at the same time and so in this video i want to do two things first of all i want to sort of explain why skill damage is so good and i'll try to do that in a slightly different approach than usual but i also want to make this video to catch you guys up to speed because i know that a lot of you guys that are watching my videos probably recently started playing rise of kingdoms in the last year or two if you've been watching for longer than that then my god thank you either way whether you're a brand new player or a returning viewer of my channel hopefully the information in this video will help you understand skill damage a little bit better or will at least refresh your memory as to what exactly skill damage is and why we keep saying it's so good even though that's been kind of the meta for years now but first what's going on guys cheers before we jump in I want to remind you guys that 69 percent of you are not subscribed so you might think you are but you're actually not go down there click that button and drop a thumbs up while you're down there okay first we have to ask ourselves what exactly is skill damage well skill damage is typically the damage that is dealt by the active skill or the first skill of a commander in rise of kingdoms and why does this matter well that's because this is one type of damage but there's other types of damage in rise of kingdoms for example lately we've had smite damage which is a sort of newer form of damage I might touch on this a little bit later but that's not totally the topic of the video but we've also got things such as counter attack damage which I'm going to talk about as well and we also have what is called normal damage and the game actually defines this it says the normal damage is the damage dealt by basic attacks and and counter attacks okay so how do we know how much damage a commander is actually dealing out in the open field if I send good old markswoman over here yes she is filled with tier 4 cavalry if I start attacking this barbarian you're gonna see a couple of different numbers showing up on, on the screen every second okay and you'll see that these numbers are decreasing as the number of troops in the battle is decreasing over time that's what damage is right the more damage you deal to a target the more troops that they will lose in that turn and therefore they themselves will also be dealing less damage because the amount of damage that you deal is based on the number of troops that you have in your army and that's very important okay this applies to normal damage counterattack damage skill damage smite damage no matter what type of damage you're dealing in the game the amount of troops in your army the amount of troops left is a big component for the amount of damage that you're going to do so if there's one thing that you remember from this video more troops equals more damage all else things equal that's one of the reasons why vip 18 is so powerful because you literally get 10 percent more units compared to vip 17 and also i think this unit capacity shows up somewhere else in here i don't know exactly where but that is also why having the 50 percent or the 25 percent troop expansion is very important for open field fighting because you're literally just dealing more damage okay so if we take a look at the battle log that we just created against that barbarian you're gonna see uh, two main components on most of these turns you're gonna see my markswoman launching a basic attack and the barbarian's gonna lose some units because of that and then the barbarian is going to launch a counter attack in response to my basic attack and I will lose some units as well then on the same turn the barbarian is also going to be launching a basic attack against me right because I'm hitting him he's hitting me we're both hitting each other and so we're both dealing basic attacks to one another and therefore my markswoman will also get a chance to launch a counter attack in response to the barbarian attacking me and they will also lose some units so one thing that I want you guys to notice here is that the basic attack causes the barbarian to lose 1033 units and my counter attack also causes the barbarian to lose another 1033 units and you'll see for turn three specifically they lost 2066 and so the total number of troops they lost during that turn is 2066 and there's two components to that there is basic attacks and counter attacks and you'll see for the barbarian as well his basic attack and his counter attack they deal the same amount of unit damage to my markswoman okay so what we can see here is that as long as you don't have any sort of imbalances for example if we look at the fourth skill on martel that only boosts the counter attack damage then you're going to see that your basic attacks and your counter attacks are typically going to be dealing the same amount of damage on every single turn trust me i know this is a video about skill damage but we're going to get there in just a second okay but it's important to start the discussion with basic attacks and counter attacks that way we sort of have a baseline for the amount of damage that skills are doing right because your normal attack and counter attacks happen every single turn that's like the damage that is guaranteed to occur there's nothing else that has to happen whereas with the skill damage you actually have to build up rage to launch that active skill okay and so in order to understand how powerful skill damage is you have to understand how much damage is basic damage right and so we can figure that 
that out we can take a look at mark's woman's active skill and it says that this skill damage is 100 it's kind of pathetic it's very low right and so what we can find out here is how much damage are we dealing on a with a normal attack right that's the, I'm just curious like that would be sort of the baseline right because that happens every single turn and so we can figure that out pretty easily if we come into the battle log we can take a look at turn 11 and here we could see an additional component to this turn remember previous turns it was just an attack and a counter attack okay that's all the damage but on turn 11 because we have the active skill we have a third component here which is the active skill on Mark's woman now if we take a look okay it's too hot for the hoodie anyway if we take a look at the units lost here uh from the 100 damage factor skill shot it's 379 and if we compare that to the basic attack from Mark's woman it's 669. so this means actually for Mark's woman the the skill damage she's actually dealing less skill damage than she is for a basic attack let's just do some really basic math here okay 379 divided by 669 we'll see that it's almost half 0.57 if you round it it's almost half but what we can learn from that is that the 100 damage factor from the skill shot is half of a basic attack so a basic attack would be 200 damage factor right and also there's a counter attack which we already established are equal so on a typical regular turn your basic attack plus your counter attack which is always going to occur unless you're running away or something like that now the reason that it's not exactly half is because we're doing some napkin math here and it's possible that there's some other small factors that are happening in the background like I'm fighting on my territory and I have a bunch of VIP buffs and maybe the way that bonus damage to barbarians is maybe this is calculated slightly different for normal attacks versus skill damage and also I don't know what troop type the barbarians were or maybe the cat maybe it counters them I, I'm not really sure there, there's a lot of the official damage formula has never been revealed by rise of kingdom so different things influence the damage factors in different ways but for the purposes of this video it's important to understand that it's generally acknowledged that a basic attack has a 200 damage factor and a counter attack has a 200 damage factor as well and you'll do both of those on a single turn for 400 damage factor okay now that we kind of have our baseline damage like that's how much damage you're just going to deal for free every single turn no matter what now we can finally turn towards skill damage okay and this is why skill damage is so good in rise of kingdoms because skill damage unless we're talking about like sargon or freddy or something like that skill damage hits all on one turn it's all this damage on a single turn for a big payout so remember on a given turn if we're dealing 400 damage factor well then we could take a look at huo who has 2700 damage factor on a single turn with his active skill 2700 divided by 400 is 6.75 so almost seven turns almost seven turns worth of damage is being inflicted with a single skill shot on a single turn now that might not sound that crazy but when you consider that a turn in rise of kingdoms takes approximately one second of real world time then you'll understand that in order to get this equivalent amount of damage from just your normal attacks you would have to stay connected to that target and hit be hitting them for seven seconds okay and again that might not sound like a lot but try running into an enemy murder ball for seven seconds if you're not in position you're probably dead okay seven seconds is a really long amount of time because of how open field fighting works in rise of kingdoms or at least if you're in a b seed or a seed or imperium kingdom the fights can get really intense and dealing seven turns worth of damage in a single second is really really good but as you guys know this is not where this ends because there's also aoe now i'm going to touch on aoe in just a second so please stay tuned but so far i've explained why skill damage itself is so good you get lots of turns of damage all at once but now let's talk about why the skill damage bonus is also really good and this should be pretty self-explanatory if you've been following me throughout this video but this skill damage bonus is kind of multiplicative with your skill damage factor so what do I mean by this well the amount of damage that you deal either with your basic attacks or your counter attacks is a some formula there's a there's a battle formula in rise of kingdoms that has to do with your units stats okay so that's literally like the numbers here your units stats plus the bonuses from like your technology and all the other things that you can get in the game your armaments all that stuff right just to be clear your armament bonuses don't show up in the green here they only show up in the actual battles but the point is your basic attacks and counter attacks take the stats of your troops and the amount of troops that you have 
and it compares it to the enemy's stats troops remaining troop type all that other stuff what territory you're on right all that stuff comes into play and so the building blocks of that formula are attack defense and health those are the only actual stats in the game right everything else is just a multiplier on top of those things and so then we have to ask ourselves okay well if that's true then does increasing your attack also increase the damage you deal with your skill which is a good question and so I ran that test here one thing you'll see on this battle report here on turn 11 this was with no attack bonuses and no skill damage bonuses you'll see that the active skill and markswoman caused the target to lose 379 units then if we take a look at this report you'll see that I used a five percent troop attack increase and if we come over to turn 12 when I started to deal damage you'll see that they lost 388 units so what we know is that everything else the same the target lost more units when I had a five percent attack bonus now Here's one thing that to keep in mind, uh, the 5% increase to attack does increase the amount of damage I'm dealing every single turn up till that point. So it's possible, or it's, I mean, it's guaranteed that the enemy would be slightly weaker by the time we land on the active skill turn. And so therefore they may take more damage. Okay. Cause the amount of damage they take is a ratio between your damage and their damage. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. That's like a whole other video. The point is we can see a small increase in the amount of troops that the enemy loses as a result of the active skill now the best way to test that would be to actually rage load and actually just only hit them for one turn with your active skill and i know this is going to sound like a trust me bro thing okay but last time that i checked and i've seen other youtubers do this it's pretty well understood that your attack stats also influence your skill damage okay and this makes sense intuitively right because at the end of the day it is damage factor okay it's literally it's, there's nothing special here it's literally just damage factor but it's a much higher number okay so now that we know that you're increasing your attack will increase the amount of skill damage you deal why is it better to get bonuses to skill damage right here we could see 30 percent bonus to skill damage as opposed to like let's say 40 percent bonus to attack which of those is better right like how do we know which would like if you had to choose which one would you pick for example your city skin you could choose a city skin that gives you five percent skill damage or you could fight for let's say a zenith of power that gives you a 12 percent troop attack bonus well what's better five percent skill damage or 12 percent troop attack let's take a look at another markswoman battle log shall we here you'll see that there is no five percent bonus to attack and here on turn 11 i cast my active skill and the target loses 391 units okay and just to be 100 transparent here if we come to troop buffs you'll see the five percent skill damage bonus which was not present on this troop buff here for the uh bonus to attack 108 for the attack one and this one was 103 okay so remember the one where she has five percent more attack she deals 388 and if we compare that to the one where we have five percent skill damage again it's 391 okay so now we know that five percent skill damage increases the amount of troops that the enemy loses more than five percent attack okay so that's good to know so a one percent bonus to skill damage is in most cases more valuable than a one percent bonus for attack if what we care about is skill damage dealt okay because remember your attack is going to influence your normal attacks and counter attacks whereas skill damage is only going to influence your skill damage so like there's going to be it's it's not exactly equal you're going to get a little bit more value out of just the raw attack on any given turn but what we can see here is that point for point for skill damage at least a bonus to skill damage is really really good now why might that be the case well there's two reasons first of all attack is a component of the actual damage formula and so giving your units more attack is an additive bonus and the additive bonus kind of has diminishing returns because you're going to get a lot of attack from a lot of different places i mean my infantry just baseline have 93 percent more attack from a bunch of other things that i have here and that's with the, that's with my city skin losing 10 percent. okay it's it's even more if we go down to like cavalry they have 108 okay and so the way that your attack stats influence the damage that is dealt you kind of get a diminishing return over time to the more attack that you add to your unit right and of course that makes sense because otherwise you could just stack attack points infinitely and that would be the main stat that you would care about and you would just deal massive amounts of damage and as long as no one's hitting you you would just get away with it right and so the way that the formula is is built is so that way you know there's a little bit of balance between all the different stats and this is why just as a side note health is typically considered the most valuable stat because if you look through all your different troop types health is the lowest for all of them right you typically have more attack and defense than you do health and to further this 
if you go into kvk and you have crystal technology you'll notice that all the crystal technology gives you attack right you're going to get a ton of attack in kvk and so this is why you know attack is a valuable stat it's literally how much damage you're dealing but because there's diminishing returns this is why people say attack is bad okay it's not true attack is not bad it's just the least valuable of all the stats and and it still does something and it's still important to have a lot of it but the reason that skill damage bonus is more important or at least impactful point for point is because this is a multiplicative bonus of your damage and so essentially the battle formula will take all your stats in consideration and it will compare them against your enemy stats and all the other things involved in the battle and it will spit out a number that says this is how much your skill damage is going to be for that turn and then it will take that number and it will say okay what other bonuses are now going to be applied to that skill damage one of those things is skill damage bonus obviously other things that influence skill damage are things like all damage okay like literally 30 percent all damage that's another really nice bonus and that's one of the reasons that all damage is like the cream of the crop like the literal best stat to get all damage is lit it literally amplifies all of your damage okay so that's why it's surprising julius caesar is so bad considering his double relic gives you 20 percent all damage like that is basically the best stat you can get in the game in terms of point for point value this will affect your basic attacks counter attacks smite damage skill damage anything that you do it's 20 percent more right and yet caesar is still trash which just goes to show how bad he actually is but now that we know that this is multiplicative based on the outputs we can do some napkin math again okay this video hopefully you've realized by now we are oversimplifying things just so that way you can understand them a lot easier but if we say okay 2700 damage factor what's an additional 30 percent well that means it's now 3510 okay and so the difference there was an 800 damage factor increase again oversimplifying just so that way you guys understand but remember a single turn has a basic attack and a counter attack and each of those is 200 damage factor remember we figured that out with markswoman so that means every turn is 400 damage factor well okay so a 30 percent bonus to skill damage is for huo at least kind of like two more turns of damage okay that's a lot that's a lot and this isn't even the highest skill damage in in the game this is why the fourth skill on Yi song Ye made his circular aoe so insane and kept him meta for so long and that's also why the twilight fall city skin is so impactful and that's also why the ottoman empire as a civilization is so good it's because all of these little bonuses to skill damage all add up and it is a multiplicative effect on all commanders that deal any amount of skill damage and remember this is all just for a single target damage commander this entire thing is amplified when we look at aoe commanders so for example if we look at Zhuge Liang we have a 2000 damage factor that hits five targets now there is a reduction here that says every additional target reduces the damage to each target by 15 percent so there is a small penalty built in here so that way this doesn't scale completely out of control now as far as I know the way that this penalty actually works is if you have three targets there's the target you're hitting and two additional targets so you would do the 2000 damage factor times 0.85 for the first additional target then you would multiply it by 0.85 again for the second additional target so now you have 1445 is the actual damage factor but remember you're hitting three targets so okay boom now we have 4335 that's for three targets and you can go ahead and do this again for four targets so that would be three additional targets so 0.85 so that's one additional target two additional targets three additional targets and there's a total of four targets so you multiply by four that's your total damage for four targets and that's your total damage for five targets so 5220 now again this is napkin math very rough general topic overview okay but this would be in theory your damage factor for hitting five targets now that's about twice as much as huo so all the insane things that we just talked about for for huo are literally doubled for an AOE commander like Zhuge Liang, who hits five targets. And think about Liu Che. Now I know this is smite damage, but he has an even higher initial damage factor hitting five targets still, which is, is insane. So I guess we can ignore Liu Che for a moment because we're talking mainly about skill damage here. But if we just round it to 5,220, well, remember all the way back to when we did the Marks Markswoman discussion earlier, you're dealing about 400 damage factor per turn. So you have about 13 turns worth of damage from a single active skill with this skill tree and like let's say you get feral nature and you pop this on turn eight you're literally dealing more damage in that single turn 
than all of the turns leading up to it combined that's why aoe is so insane and why the fact that skill damage is multiplicative and all this stuff adds up like Zhuge Liang has a built-in 20 percent skill damage bonus and if you pair him with somebody like herman prime he also has a 20 percent aoe skill damage bonus as well that's 40 percent more plus the five percent from twilight fall city skin plus five percent from ottoman empire you're up to 50 percent bonus skill damage uh on top of what we just talked about before hopefully by explaining it in this way you can understand how we've arrived at the current meta everything is multiplicative and this is just an insane amount of damage for a single turn and remember this is also influenced by all damage multipliers as well so if you get an all damage bonus from let's say your crystal technology in kvk that's going to make Juge Leong's active skill deal more damage as well. The all damage bonus from VIP 17, that's going to make his active skill deal more damage as well. And so this is why the sort of meta in Rise of Kingdoms right now is literally just all the commanders that have the biggest number in the active skill, right? If you look at Liu Che, Juge Leong, Huo, Nevsky falls in here as well, but that's mainly because he does other things like debuffs and stuff. But he also has Joan of Arc who has this active skill twice because of her fourth skill. Scipio has a three target AOE like it's just the damage factor has been so power crept on these commanders that it's made skill damage even more meta than it was back when it first became meta and that's because with each commander release the skill damage seems to get a little bit better but we're not seeing an insane amount of power creep from a normal attack or counter attack damage perspective right because those numbers are kind of just like built in right unless you have a commander that literally specifies that it increases normal and counter attack like I don't know let's say we go over to uh, Attila for example it's kind of what he's known for is the normal attack and counter attack damage bonus on the active skill unless you see that the amount of damage that you're dealing in every single turn isn't that different over time because those are just calculated from the stats on your commanders and stats have inflated over the years right this game came out in 2018 now we have equipment we have uh, iconics we have uh, special talents on equipment we have armaments we have crystal technology there's a lot of different ways that you can get more stats now than in the past but from a commander perspective you know the the stats on the new commanders are, are a little bit higher than the stats on the older commanders absolutely i'm not going to deny that but if we look at a commander like Guan Yu, he has, let's see, 30% attack. That's it. And then if you compare him to somebody like Richard, he has 30% of infantry stats as well. And then if you compare it to somebody like Liu Che, he's got 20% defense, 20% attack. So that's 40% of stats. So, I mean, it's a little higher, right? It's definitely a little bit higher. If we compare it to somebody like CPO, he has 40% attack. So 60% of stats there, which is, that's a lot. Okay. That's, that's a lot. That's double the amount of stats that we saw on Richard. Right. And of course the quality of these sets matters. Of course, we talked about that earlier, but in general, like going from 30% of stats to 60% of stats, if you compare Richard to CPO, right, that's a doubling of the stats that you get, but active skill damage. When the game first came out, there weren't that many AOE commanders and the AOE on these commanders wasn't that good. Right? like we obviously we had the aoe on the expertise from caesar 400 nothing crazy there with the aoe on uh barca as well as i think 400 and then a little bit extra here the main aoe damage dealer was a song a right and it was 1700 which was insane right but a lot of these early game commanders a thousand damage factor right and so if we compare these these early game damage factors to some of the late game damage factors you'll see that in general i would say it's more than doubled and so this is why normal attacks and counter attacks haven't been able to really keep up with skill damage also we talked about before the active skill damage is also influenced by the attack stat right so in conclusion skill damage has been a very large component of the power creep in rise of kingdoms as far as the meta is concerned it's not the only thing we have buffs we have debuffs we have instant proc damage we have all this other stuff i'm not saying it's the only thing okay but it is a major contributing factor to power creep in the game more so than other things in my opinion such as the stats on the commanders right and because the skill damage bonuses are multiplicative and because you're dealing so many turns worth of damage instantaneously on a single turn the value that you get out of massive skill damage is exceptional and that is especially true when we talk about aoe so hopefully you guys have a little bit of a better understanding as to how skill damage works why it's so good why it's so valuable why it is meta and why so many people are running around with double or triple aoe on their kit for every single meta pairing this is why it's because this is just how you get the most damage out in the field 
all else things considered equal if you made it this far into the video hopefully you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni i will talk to you guys again soon peace